Welcome to Fact Recap. The story starts as two modern-looking black men in their fancy underwear are being sold off at an auction. They are chained by their necks. Right. Following this, the story goes back into a flashback where it all started. It revolves around two strained half-brothers Regis and Joel from the West India who lead completely different lives. Joel is a mono-racial black man who just got out of prison after serving nine time for stealing an old woman's purse. Currently, he lives with his mother and his nine-year-old daughter. He is unemployed and blames racism for all his problems, especially his joblessness. However, he has never seriously tried to find work. On the other hand, Regis is a biracial man. He is married to a white woman and has a nine-year-old daughter with her. He lives in an affluent town and is well integrated into the upper class society. Regis is employed at the local town hall and works as an assistant to the mayor. One day Regis receives a call from his uncle informing him that his father is dying and it is the old man's final wish to meet all his children. However Regis pays no regard to his father as he was not around when Regis was a child. He then proceeds to have dinner with his family but his crazy wife threatens to get laid with other men if he does not pay his father one last visit. She jumped to that specific threat awfully quickly left with no choice he reluctantly agrees. The next day, Regis takes a flight to his hometown where his father resides. He runs into Joel who has also come to see their father. The brothers who have been out of contact for more than a decade put their differences aside and hire a taxi together. They catch up in the taxi on the way to their father's home Regis tells Joel everything about his successful life while the latter lies to cover up his failures out of embarrassment upon reaching their father's home. They are introduced to their aunt and several half-sisters. Turns out that their dad ventured throughout the world and had relations with countless women. This explains why Joel and Regis have different skin colors. The old man's eyes light up when he sees his only two sons before him before dying. He tells Regis and Joel that they will inherit a great treasure. This excites the brothers and they eagerly wait to hear about the treasure. However, to their dismay, all they receive as inheritance is the document of emancipation of their ancestors. This document was handed over to a few slaves by their owners for some extraordinary work or act apparently. Regis and Joel's ancestors were granted freedom long before slavery was legally abolished in the West Indies. However, they are not concerned about the symbolic value of this piece of paper. They scoff at the inheritance. They then angrily tear the paper under the disapproving eye of their late father's sister. This enrages the old woman, so she decides to teach the Baratso lesson. He casts a voodoo spell on them and sends them back to the 17th century where slavery is still prevalent. In the next scene, when Regis and Joel wake up, they find themselves stripped down to their underwear in an open field as the two Artless wonder about what happened. A couple of terrified black people run past them just then two slave hunters also arrive and capture the gross desire brothers. They are then taken to a slave market and sold to Monsieur Jourdain, a landowner. Jourdain entrusts Joel to the farms where he will work under the care of brutal and deeply racist foremen. While Regis is sent to the kitchens of the residents, soon the half-brothers discover that they have actually time-traveled to 1780 when slavery was still a thing. Next day, the slaves are forced to listen to a priest who reads them a fake Bible about how black people should obey the whites, but since the gross to see your brothers are the only ones besides the whites who can read, they refuse to agree with the contents. Regis even surprises the priest by reading him a line from the book, Later in the day, Joel shows up late to the field and gets hit by Henri. Fed up with Henri's torture and behavior, Joel makes a run for it to escape the farm, but ends up hitting his head on a pole and knocking himself out. Due to his actions, he is disgraced in front of everyone. That night, Regis is called to Monsieur Jourdain's office where his ability to read is acknowledged. Jourdain praises him for being a smart slave and gives him the privilege to control the other slaves with Henri in the meantime. Joel is getting his wounds treated by a female slave, Rosalie. It has been only five minutes since they've met, but Joel has already started liking her at an opportune moment. He leans in for a kiss, only to get turned down. 
Rosalie then reveals that she is in love with a fellow slave named Isidora, much to Joel's disappointment. The next day, Regis carries out his new duty and starts ordering and commanding other slaves to do their work. Joel is shocked to see his brother acting like the whites and criticizes him for being selfish. However, Regis could care less and he continues to be loyal to his new masters and reports his work throughout the day to Monsieur Jourdain, eventually everyone in the white household finds out about regis's ability to read and starts mocking him they also joke about whether or not he can play the piano to everyone's surprise regis plays the piano beautifully however this result in him getting whipped severely by the whites finally fed up regis wants out and the next morning the two brothers flee the plantation by secretly hopping in the carriage of a jewish man named isaac they reach his place Isaac approaches them and reveals that he knew about their presence all along. The brothers beg him for mercy but to their surprise, Isaac provides them with great hospitality and care as Jews are also a victim of discrimination. Soon Monsieur Jourdain's henchmen arrive at Isaac's home in search of the two brothers, before they could get caught Regis and Joel bid Isaac farewell and flee through the back door. They make their way to the shoreline where they take an abandoned boat and set out into the ocean. Ironically, they cross paths with a ship that is used to transport slaves to auctions and are caught and imprisoned. At last the gross to Seer brothers end up in the same slave market where they are. Caught by Jordanian's henchmen fortunately on the way back to the plantation, the brothers are saved by an African tribe who call themselves the Maroons. Here it is revealed that the people of the tribe were all slaves once before they fled from their owners. The two are welcomed into the tribe and they began to chant with the tribe leader. However, Regis who himself is married to a white girl refuses to chant. When the Maroons talk about killing the whites this enrages the tribe and they turn against them. But fortunately Regis and Joel manage to outrun the tribe and reach safety. The next day, the two find themselves in an unknown place, where they see their aunt who cast a spell on them the brothers. They plead with her to remove the spell and mention that they will do anything for it. Initially, the old woman refuses but when the brothers keep pleading she gives them a hint, she tells them that they must return to the plantation again and reunite their ancestors Isidore and Rosalie. She also tells them to rectify the error without elaborating any further. She is probably referring to Joel trying to make out with Rosalie. The woman leaves behind her special pipe and instructs the brothers to smoke it when they have successfully completed their mission. The two are brainstorming how to tackle the situation. Joel suddenly remembers seeing having oral intercourse with another man. He also recorded a video of the incident on his phone and shows it to Regis' questionable move Joel. The two they brothers mistakenly believe that this is the error that they are supposed to fix. In the next scene, Joel and Regis return back to the plantation. They try to negotiate with Mosia Jordan on their punishment. They get branded with a sigil of the plantation. They then return to their huts and begin to plan their course of action. Meanwhile, inside the mansion, the Whites are celebrating a wedding. Taking this as the perfect distraction, the brothers organize a party I of their guess, own for I the know. slaves. They secretly steal a barrel of rum from the distillery to intoxicate and to activate the romance between Isidore and Rosalie. However, their plan hits a roadblock when Regis spots Joel making out with Rosalie due to his infatuation with her afterwards, the two brothers improvise and physically help the couple have intercourse. Believing that they can go I home whenever they like, the brothers decide to take revenge on the whites. They then make their way into the mansion armed where they humiliate everyone Joel kisses the master's daughter and even slaps a white man. All of a sudden, Henri barges into the room with a gun and threatens the brothers. Still Regis and Joel show no sign of fear and proceed to use the pipe. Unfortunately, when they used the pipe, nothing happened for the pipe. Given by the old lady was replaced with an ordinary one. They are locked in a cage and are condemned to execution the next day. That night, the brothers get emotional and start contemplating. Joel confesses that he is broke and jobless, after a few hours, as the brothers are still sympathizing with each other, Anria arrives and takes them out to the field, where they are supposed to be hanged. 
However, right before the execution, Monsieur Jordan's son Victor runs off into the forest as he cannot bear watching the sight. Rosalie chases after him and soon find out he fell into nearby river. All member of he firmly panic and run to the to the river. Isidore used this opportunity to save the brothers. He then tell them to run, which they oblige. As the brothers flee, they come across Victor, who is being swept by the stream. Without a second thought, the two I jump into the river. But to Regis's surprise, Joel cannot swim. This makes the task more tedious. But he managed to save his brother and Victor. Grateful to the brothers for saving his son's life, Masurus Jordan sets them free. The half brothers are also awarded with the very same document of emancipation that they we were provided with as inheritance. But they refuse and ask Isidore and Rosalie to be set free. Since they have lost the magic pipe, they accept they may never return to their time. One day, Isidore and Rosalie wish the brothers farewell and leave the plantation with the papers as the two watch them leave from Music afar. Henri approaches imagined. them and orders them to get back to work and then try to humiliate them by blowing smoke to their faces, but they disappear unknown to the brothers that Henri stole their magic pipe. The next scene, the brothers are back to their time. They saw their aunt holding original copy of the paper. Joel now finds job at a construction site where he still complains about this minimum wage and that it has to do with him being black. Meanwhile, Ray Zizier turns to his work at the town hall. One day, as he is about to leave his office, he greet Mayor that passes a racist joke. He stand up for himself and then storm off. He is no longer the man he used to be. If you enjoy this recap, subscribe and like. Till next time. Music licensing reimagined.